Uh, let's start with <laughs> Susan Rice. A Ambassador Rice, uh, first of all, your reflections on this historic news this today. Uh, I'm just, I'm full of joy. I'm full of pride in our country. Uh, I'm just uh, awed by our resilience and how we have come to a moment of saying we need to take a different course uh, and have done it rather resoundingly. But now we have to come back together and heal. And that's why Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are so much the right leaders for this moment. Um, I have uh, in my own household uh, people of different political persuasions, particularly my uh, my young son, who's uh, in his early 20s, um, but other members of my family as well. And, you know, we, I think, uh, represent in a microcosm what we face as a nation, which is to recognize that we have the love and the bonds of family and of country that have to be stronger than anything that divides us. Uh, we can't survive otherwise. And I am just grateful to my core that Joe Biden, who knows in his soul how important unity is, how important uh, our collective strength is, is now the man to lead us forward uh, after a, a period where, uh, you know, the, our differences have been sadly ex exacerbated. Susan Rice, it's Rachel Maddow here. I'm joining you from um, my COVID quarantine cove. Uh, I apologize for any technical difficulties. It's a little weird right now. Um, but I wanted to ask you, um, I, can hear the, I can hear that you're moved by this moment in your voice. I know you're a, a tough and even keel person. Um, but let me ask you on the national security side, if you are at all worried about some of the weirdness of this interregnum, um, the fact that D Joe Biden is, is unequivocally, in terms of the election result, is unequivocally the president-elect, but the seems like the only man in America who doesn't believe that is, is the man who is currently president of the United States. Are you concerned that this could be a, a fragile national security moment for us? Rachel, I'm not that concerned at this point. I mean, that could change. And I've certainly had my moments of concern up and down over the last few weeks. But here's the thing. Uh, the world knows that Joe Biden is going to be the next president of the United States. There's no ambiguity about that. I think it is very clear to any adversaries who may be thinking about testing us that this would be a very foolhardy thing to do now and into the future. Um, and I think, you know, I have great faith and confidence in uh, our law enforcement, our, our, uh, our U.S. military uh, to keep us safe. Uh, in this very important moment. And Donald Trump, uh, no doubt, uh, may uh, behave in a fashion that uh, is uh, chaotic, uh, that is disruptive, um, that is counterproductive over the next two months. I hope that's not the case. I hope uh, with the light of day and the opportunity to reflect and that those around him will uh, caution a, a different path. But if he does, we may have a rocky couple of months, but we now have light at the end of the tunnel. We know where we're going to be on January 20th. America mm. knows where we're going to be and the world knows where we're going to be. And that is in safe, competent, decent hands, uh, leadership with experience and integrity uh, and that cares deeply about this country. We will have leadership that puts the interests of the United States and its people first. And that is an extraordinary blessing and outcome. And I think it will help us stay steady and stay uh, on course through what may be a, a rough couple of months, but maybe not. Let's hope for the best. Mm -hmm. Ambassador Rice, uh, take us inside one of the transition uh, traditions that is not just a tradition, that it's important, and that is foreign leaders contact with the president-elect, uh, normally coming in the form of congratulatory phone calls from foreign leaders to the president-elect. We remember four years ago, there were stories about uh, ran calls randomly being picked up by cell phones uh, in, the, uh, in, in the Trump world and in Trump Tower uh, from these uh, foreign leaders. And so what is the protocol? Who is managing what in, in the way those calls come in to Joe Biden? And Will Vladimir Putin be calling Joe Biden with a congratulations <laughs> call? 
Well, Lawrence, it may surprise you, but I'm not here to speak for Vladimir Putin, so I, I can't <laughs> give you a good answer to that one. But the norm is, the norm is that uh, a, a president-elect uh, has a smart and competent team around him or her one day, and that they field the requests that will come, I'm sure, are already coming from leaders around the world to congratulate the president-elect. And in a normal circumstance, uh, those calls would be logged. There'd be an, uh, an order uh, devised as to how the, the president-elect returns those calls. There should be notes taken. Uh, in an ideal world, if there's cooperation uh, with the outgoing administration, those calls might be fielded through the State Department Operations Center, uh, which would be the ideal. Um, and so I know that the, the, the team Biden-Harris is prepared for this. I know that they have uh, planned for this possibility and now this reality, and they will hand it, handle it with the professionalism and competence and transparency that, they, that will be the model for the Biden-Harris administration. Uh, one thing that Rachel and I have been wondering about is the possible turbulence of this transition, uh, mostly by people who are in these positions in the uh, Trump administration not being cooperative or being anti-cooperative or whatever uh, levels those that that uh, tension might reach. Uh, what do you anticipate in that? And uh, what uh, if you if things have to be overcome, how would you expect that would be dealt with if there were challenges like that in this transition? Well, Lawrence, look, it's too soon to know uh, whether this will turn out to be uh, something that, that a, approaches a normal transition or whether it becomes uh, a, a complex and, and, and complicated transition. I know that the Biden team is ready for either one. Uh, and while it is so much better for our country for there to be a responsible transfer of power as we have had uh, and certainly tried to have in every previous transition uh, in modern memory, um, if that is not the case, we will be fine. The country will be fine. Uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have around them extremely experienced, competent uh, players on their team. They themselves represent that competence and integrity. Uh, we will get to January 20th. We'll be prepared to hit the ground running. Uh, and the country will be in a better position to confront the coronavirus, the economic devastation that it's caused, uh, our kids, many of them still not in school, um, and and the racial justice challenges that we now face uh, in such stark terms, and climate change. All of these issues are right front and center on their plates, and uh, they will be ready. I know that, that they will be ready to handle them. Ambassador Susan Rice, thank you very much for joining us on this historic day. We really appreciate it. Great to see you. Thank you, Lawrence and Rachel. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.